Hello and welcome to my channel, Mental Health with Melissa. My name is Melissa. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, licensed clinical therapist, clinical supervisor, PhD, psychology research student, and also a woman of color. And I love teaching and talking mental health to those that are interested in the mental health professions and also providing LCSW tips on taking your tests. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for more content. So today we are going to be talking about three tips that you need to know to nail that interview to get that therapy or social work position. So if you're interested, stay tuned. So today we are going to talk three tips on how to be amazing in your therapist or social work job interview to land that job, of course. You know, many of you have just graduated. It is graduation season. So this video will hopefully help those new to the field, but also more seasoned um, mental health practitioners hoping to look for other jobs. But no matter what stage you are in, this video may be a helpful tool for you in doing awesome in, in your interview. Me personally, I have interviewed a ton of times. I was a field instructor, so when I was in the interview process and finding an intern that matched my program, I interviewed tons of students. This was before COVID hit, so I was interviewing students in person at that time um, that were really hoping to get into their internship program. I also have been on multiple interview panels to ask job candidates questions and was very involved in the selection process. So I know what it takes to make a terrific interview. So if you are interested in watching, please stay tuned. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do when you are interviewing or right before you are interviewing is something that you've probably already read online um, when you're looking for tips in doing really great in that job interview. And that thing is to do your research on the company. And the reason why I am adding this tip uh, specifically to the job of a social worker interview or a therapist interview is because a lot of the time when you are a mental health or behavioral health provider, you are in a type of organization, whether it be nonprofit um, or uh, private practice or in the private sector where you are going to be uh, helping those that are a vulnerable population and the organization has a very specific mission for that. So that's what I mean when I say do your research. So an example of this is working for a hospital. So say you want to work for, I'm just gonna make up a name, Candy Cane Hospital. And so you're gonna want to go online to Candy Cane Hospital and really find what their mission statement is. So say their mission statement on their homepage is to provide mental health services to those of various backgrounds, including low socioeconomic status patients. So you're going to want to incorporate that mission statement into your goals. So if a goal or a passion of yours is to work with those that are um, less fortunate um, or are lower socioeconomic status, and then you're going to want to say that and connect that to the mission statement because doing that does a lot in the interview. First, it lets the interviewer know that you have done your research, you know about the company. It lets the interviewer know that a little bit about who you are, because hopefully by this point, you've also talked a little bit about you. You've told the interviewer some of um, your experiences. And so they learn more about you in this capacity. And then third, it lets the interview it lets the interviewer know that you are uh, serious about this position and you took the time to really make sure that you are finding a company or an organization that was in align with your own goals. 
The second tip that we're going to talk about is to talk about your niche when you are in the job interview. So um, if you do not have a particular area of expertise yet, you can talk about why you chose the company or the organization um, and what about that organization was appealing to you. Now, why is it important to talk about your niche um, or more simply put, you know, an area that you specialize in? Now, for people that are probably more seasoned, uh, mental health or behavioral health professionals that are more seasoned, they likely, you likely have um, more experience in working with a specific population. Even if you've had several different positions and worked kind of with every type of population you can think of, there's got to be at least one type of population where you spend a majority of your time. And you're going to want to really elaborate on that. And the reason why is because employers like to see that you have a specialty. Now, when you have a specialty, that brings something to the table that other um, candidates may not bring to the table. So you're really going to want to kind of um, market that, you know, and then if you don't have a lot of experience yet and you're just graduating from um, school, you can use some of your internship um, experience and talk about why you chose um, to interview with the organization that you're interviewing with, what population they serve and bringing that into the interview. So for example, if you don't have a lot of experience working with a special population, but the organization that you're going to be interviewing with serves the homeless population, you're going to want to say something like, I uh, have just worked in my internship at this point as I just graduated last year, but in my internship, I learned a lot about different types of interventions, such as motivational interviewing and harm reduction methods. And in these specific interventions, I've noticed that they were very beneficial, especially to populations such as those that are homeless, because you want to start with where the client is at. And if the client likes being homeless, it's not my job to house them or it's not my job to convince them to be housed. I really want to make sure that I can provide that motivational interviewing support. So that's just an example. But um, obviously, again, if you have a more specialty area, then you're going to want to talk about that. The third thing um, that you are going to want to do in your interview to help you get that therapy or social work job is to discuss your real therapy or social work profession examples. So that's kind of ex an extension of tip number two, but to further this, you wanna do that by using what we call the knowledge skills and application method. And what the knowledge skills and application method entail are three steps. So first, you're gonna to wanna to talk about the example that you've had. Um, so in, in a case like that, you can give a case study. Obviously, you're not going to want to share any identifiable information about a client that you really worked with. And then secondly, you're going to state what the problem was that was presented during the time that you worked with them. And then three, you're going to want to provide the intervention and state how you handled the problem. So I'm going to give you an example. So um, if some if the interviewer is asking me about a challenging client case that I had, I would first start by saying I had a client that was diagnosed with substance use disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, and schizophrenia. This client had a really hard time with um, tr uh, building trust. And when I first met with this client, this client refused to talk to me and um, did not want to provide any information to me. And so it was very challenging to get at to make any sort of headway with this client or do any therapy. 
but I realized after talking to the after talking to the client's partner that the client really didn't want to open up because they really hated the way that my couch looked. And so I let the client know that um, I'm sorry that the couch was an eyesore and I asked them if they wanted to go outside. The client was really happy that I had mentioned the eyesore couch and we were able to continue our sessions outside from then on out. And the client was able to really start to build a rapport with me. Now, the so the um, first part of that, step one of the knowledge, skills, and application method was me telling the story about the client and providing a case presentation on their diagnoses. The second part of the knowledge, skills, and application method was stating the problem. Now, this was a really silly example because I don't want to give a real example because that's something that you can do, finding you know, something that happened in your own experience. But I stated the problem about the client um, not wanting to engage or talk to me. And then thirdly, I provided my intervention on how I handled that problem. I pointed it out, you know, I had direct communication with the client and I provided alternate um, uh, like session um, environment um, type, uh, type of uh, situation. So we met outside and the client was able to then start opening up. So you can try that out and that's gonna be really important to do because interviewers are going to want to know how you think critically and how you handle problems, especially with those that are dealing with um, any sort of mental illness or mental health related concerns or diagnoses. They're gonna wanna see you think critically through that. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for more content like this. I'll be happy to do more videos that have to surround job interview questions. If you're interested, just let me know. Until next time, managing mental health matters.